Hello, my name is Ray Bryant. I'm with the Houston Suffragist Project and I'm in the exhibit hall at the Heritage Society in Houston, Texas. And they've had an exhibit which has just closed on the 100th anniversary of the women's suffrage, but you can still access it on their website for a virtual tour and see, which is only $5, and you can see the lectures. But I'm gonna spend a couple minutes telling you about what happened with the white women's suffrage organizations uh, nine days before the election on November 2nd, 1920, they went to court. They challenged the Texas Constitution because the Texas Constitution required payment of a poll tax which meant you had to pay to vote. And it was about $25 in today's money and they thought women should vote for free. And the judge here, Judge Harvey, he agreed. And this completely upset the apple cart throughout Texas. And the Texas Attorney General said only in Harris County and Wally, Waller counties could women vote for free. Well, the forces that were controlling Houston weren't happy with this uh, verdict, this ruling, so they circulated a secret letter asking poll workers to turn away the women when they went to vote. And this was leaked, and the day before their election, there was a second hearing. Now, Houston has, we have a secret weapon. It's Hortense Ward. She was the first active attorney in the state of Texas since 1910. She is the mastermind behind this, these lawsuits, and she worked with her husband, William Ward. Hortense generally did not appear in court because she didn't want to prejudice a judge or jury against her client. So on that second, on both those hearings, men represented the women's cases. I have here um, this is the resolutions that were presented to Judge Harvey by the suffrage organizations. You can see names that you will recognize. Susan Clayton is one of them. Thousands, we believe thousands of women signed petitions asking Judge Harvey to support them, and he did. He ruled that any man who turned away an otherwise qualified woman would be held in contempt. So these are some of the headlines of the newspapers, the Houston Press and the Chronicle. You can see we don't expect 1920 Houston, a former Confederate state and with Jim Crow laws, but 6,000 black women voted and 8,000 white women voted. 14,000 women voted in this historic election and it all happened right here in Houston and this is an important part of Houston's civil rights history.